Hi, I'm Chris Kiergaard, Journal Star Associate Editor, uh, joined with Assistant Managing Editor Adam Garrick behind the camera. Uh, our editorial board today is interviewing Gabe McLeod, who's one of two candidates on the Democratic side for Peoria County Clerk in the March 17 primary. Gabe, thanks for being here. Chris, thanks for having me. All right. Uh, let me jump in and start off by asking you uh, why you're running for, for this particular position. I know you have experience in the clerk's office, but... Why do you want the big job? Sure. So I'll just start and help people with my last name. Um, they've, some people have seen the smell, spelling. You'll see it right there. And uh, my last name is spelled M-C-L-E-O-D. And you may have seen that name and say, well, I've seen that gay, but I've heard it pronounced McLeod. <laughs> and, you know, just to help you remember that I pronounce it McLeod, just remember that it rhymes with lead. McLeod, lead. And to answer your question, that fits perfectly into why I'm running for the Peoria County Clerk's position, because I want to continue to lead the office into the 21st century and really build upon the foundation I created of making our operations more efficient, our services more accessible, and importantly, protecting our community's most valuable records. Again, I want to continue to do this with a fiscally conservative approach. Okay. When, when you kicked off your candidacy, you talked quite a bit about the digitization of, yes. of some of those records. Walk me through the work that, that you've done personally yes. on that. Not, not the office, but you sure. personally, what role you've taken. Yeah. So it's the records and the county clerk's office are extremely important. Um, I have an understanding of how important they are to our community. Um, this is a an office that um, basically is not a policy. It's an administrative office. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the records, most important thing in the office. And our vital records, which are birth, marriage, and death records, all we had 12 years ago when I walked into this office, when I first started managing it, was just one paper copy of many of these records. That's it. Mm -hmm. One paper copy. So, of course, if there was ever a natural disaster or mm -hmm. an unforeseen event and your record was lost or destroyed, it was just gone. For example, mm -hmm. your marriage license. We're the only keeper of that marriage license. Mm -hmm. If that one paper copy was lost, that's it. Because mm -hmm. so, the, the copy that you get yourself is yes. not the actual actionable copy. Right? Yeah, we keep the, the certified copy that right. we issue to you mm -hmm. that you're going to need nowadays to get your real ID, mm -hmm. one with a gold star. So I, I looked at this, and I wanted to solve this problem. Um, but, of course, we're told in, in uh, county level, most governments know uh, the problem is you don't have the money. Mm -hmm. So how do we take yeah. care of this? So I went around, I talked to our IT department, and I found an existing purchase software that I already had called LaserFish. Okay, so okay. I took that software and I brought it into the county clerk's office. And what I did is I created templates, which then allowed our team members to be able to digitize and mm -hmm. index the copy, which is important. Indexing is important. What that does is it means you take the information from the record, you put it into your computer, and it works then like Google. Okay. So then when you want to get the record, retrieve mm -hmm. the record, you could just put in the information, comes right up. Mm -hmm. So I had our team go to work on digitizing these records, um, and this will you know, protect the record by having an electronic copy. Mm -hmm. And then what I saw, what I wanted with this, is when in addition to having this electronic copy, this greatly increases the speed at which we can issue that certified copy. Okay. So it hits two main points, protects your record and brings efficiency and saves money by the speed at which we can give you the record. So just give an example of that. Um, back in the day, if you came to our office before we started digitizing the records, <clears throat> excuse me, our a team member would have to take your request. They would walk all the way back to the office. They'd mm -hmm. pick up a big, heavy, 15-pound index book, mm -hmm. go through, lead them to a big, heavy, 15-pound register book, <laughs> then to maybe a bin or another book to a record that was falling apart, mm -hmm. right? Then to a copier. The copy. It took mm -hmm. a long, drawn-out process. Today mm -hmm. now, when you come into our office, and if you haven't, you will be soon again with the real ID. We can touch on mm -hmm. that. Um, you're going to come up, and you're going to request your record. We're going to receipt you. We're going to step right over at the counter to our computer. We're going to print it onto certified paper. Mm -hmm. We're going to sign it, seal it, put an envelope, hand it to you. You're going to be right out the door in five minutes or less. Okay. So it's been a mm -hmm. huge project and a huge passion of mine. And my first goal was to digitize and index all the birth and marriage records for everybody currently mm -hmm. alive in Peoria County. These are the most sought after records, mm -hmm. our highest volume, and what you need today to basically prove your identity. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what's the next step after that? Sure. I, I know that you, you said that you have yeah. all of those, those birth records, mm -hmm. marriage records for people who are alive right. yep. now. Isn't the job done at this point? Those are, are the ones that, that people living sure. need to have what else needs to be digitized so, at all? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're required permanently to keep 
every single record. Okay. So if you're required permanently to keep it, you better make it electronic. Mm-hmm. And people want these for genealogy purposes too. Mm-hmm. So if you want to check your genealogy tree or research your family in the future, you're going to want this record. Well, mm-hmm. what we can do is have this electronic, get it to you quickly. And then any record, um, basically, that we can then digitize mm-hmm. that isn't, you know, that's non confidential, we can then put online and make okay. it accessible to you. Mm-hmm. All right, and the ones that, that would be confidential, mm-hmm. there, there's a, a process where after after a certain period of time for genealogical research, Absolutely. those things yeah. are able to go online after yes. 80 or 90 so, years, right? So what we have, 75 years 75 is genealogy. Years. Okay. And what we have right now is we have, uh, the state allows you to put uh, index books mm-hmm. and register books prior to 1960 available for research. Mm-hmm. So not the record, but the actual yeah. book that tells you if we have the record. And then okay. you can request the record. Mm-hmm. That is just, you know, state statute. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we did too, just to let you know, it's part of the digitization project, what I want to do was a lot of people request these geology records. So mm-hmm. they would come into our office to do geology work. Mm-hmm. Again, these are 15 pound books. Our team members would have to bring these out for the customer. You had to come to our office, do the mm-hmm. research. I had these books digitized, preserved them, mm-hmm. put them online. So now anybody can do any geology mm-hmm. research from the index books and register books online at home. Mm-hmm. I was poking around the the website sure. a little bit earlier before the yeah. the interview. It is do you think that there's anything additional that can be done, or is this just a simple template issue? Where you know, is there anything that can be done to make it a little more user friendly to go in and find whatever the records are that you are trying to find to do those searches? Yeah, we're we're hoping to over time once. Um, basically, we have all these additional records mm-hmm. you talked about digitized. We can set up a different system, which mm-hmm. then can allow you just to search okay. by the individual and then let you know if we have it or not. Okay. Um, has there been, and, and I ask this as somebody who is doing a digital podcast right now, sure. but who still works for a print newspaper <laughs> as well as the online, we get some pushback from people on on the online or the, sure. the digital work that we do sure. and, and still want the the customer experience, the physical hard copy paper, all sure. those great things. Have you had a lot of pushback on, no. on doing any uh, of this? Absolutely not. Because um, at the end of the day, when you get your record, it ends up being a paper copy mm-hmm. with a raised seal that's still required. Mm-hmm. So it's basically just taking your record protecting and making it electronic, but then giving it back to you in a physical form. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I want to ask you a couple other things about the office itself uh, and and then get into to some some campaign related things too. Is there enough work for the clerk to do? you're You're an office employee mm-hmm. right now. you you manage mm-hmm. within the office, but the clerk themselves, is kind of a different position from the rank and file employee. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the clerk themselves does not do ordinary recording of deeds, does not themselves stand at the counter and, and do sure. the issuing of marriage licenses and sure. things like that. In fact, I think it may be a union issue for them yeah. to do that work. Absolutely. It, is there enough work for the clerk to do as an elected office for an office that we're paying somebody six figures for. Oh, absolutely. Because with it being an administrative office, there's so many services and responsibilities we have. There's so many laws that are changing continuously that we have to look and do an update. There's projects we could mm-hmm. continuously put in place, um, improvements we continue to put in place. So that's why it's important to have a leader that's a county clerk that not only understands all the services and the jobs that we have to mm-hmm. do, but can see the future and provide tools to our team members, that can allow us to do more work, increase productivity, and make our services more accessible. So if, if you do become the nominee yeah. and there's no other person who would be on the ballot besides the nominee at this point, what are those things as clerk that you would do? Walk me through yeah. two or three of those steps or directions yeah. or initiatives that you would undertake. Yeah, so um, right now, I, I can talk about a few of we, what we've done in the past. Mm-hmm. I, um, no, I, I want to know what oh, you've okay. done, sure. what you're going to do. Sure. So... Um, we will continue to update in-house software. So what I've done a lot is I've created in-house software, the tools with mm-hmm. our IT department, which has increased our productivity and allows us to do more with less. So we will continue to update those, okay. put those in place, continue mm-hmm. to create more in-house um, programs mm-hmm. and tools. And what that's going to do is, for example, I'll give you one, will be um, raffle licenses. So I okay. want to create an in-house program for raffle licenses. This will increase our productivity. And then this will allow raffle licenses, um, the actual... The, yeah, the licensees to be able to mm-hmm. submit the reports to us online. Okay, so but, if, if if I'm doing a, a, yep. a thing at the VFW, yeah. and, and I'm not a veteran of a foreign sure. war, if, if 
if I'm doing a raffle at the VFW as part of something that we're doing there, I can do everything except pick up pick up the actual license right. online. Right. I, yeah. I can fill it out. Sure, and, absolutely. Yeah. And then there's reporting afterwards. So instead okay. of you having to mail the reports into us, you know, send them to us or come in, mm -hmm. you'll be able just to submit it to us online. But to do that again, that takes somebody that understands, knows the process. It's going to take sitting down, writing that program. It's going to take testing that program. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the type of things I will be doing as county clerk. And and I'll be focusing on the website. I know in the past, you guys, have, the website was, I'll be honest here, really it, bad. It, it was pretty clunky. It, it was pretty bad. And I was actually put on a steering committee by mm -hmm. administrative to help out that ideas mm -hmm. with the new website. The web, new website's very much improved, and but it can still keep improving. And then so what we can do is as we make our services more accessible online, and you can poke around mm -hmm. and see how to do a service online, I want to create short tutorial videos okay. and put those online so you mm -hmm. can see how to do it. Again, that takes an administrative position to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that helps out because nowadays, if you want to fix something or you want to see how to do something, where do you go? Mm -hmm. You go to YouTube. Yeah. So videos mm -hmm. are very powerful. And a lot of times you can put a guide out there, but we know we all don't read instructions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we can watch a 30 second video. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I what else is there that can be done to get the word out about some of these things that, that you can do online? And I'll, I'll give you a personal sure. example. I got married uh, 16 months ago. Sure. We did not know at the time that you could fill out all of the application material for the marriage license and then just come in and get it taken care of. Now, sure. when, when we came in and did it, we filled all of that out on the screen sure. in the clerk's office and then got it done. But you know, we would have done it at home had we known that, that we could. How do you get the word out better about yeah, this? Yeah, we, we'll have to do a better job of continuing to use you know, social media, Facebook, mm -hmm. potentially Twitter, and um, with our website, um, putting that. It, it's pretty upfront, so if mm -hmm. you would have gone to the website, you would have saw it or mm -hmm. Googled it, but yeah. you know, and using if you Google it, you'll get it, but there's mm -hmm. ways we could commu communicate and get that word out. Um, but if you want to talk about that, uh, marriage license mm -hmm. relief, if I can get a second to talk about it, I'd appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, some I'm of the services I improved. Mm -hmm. So my main focus in the office is always improving the services um, for our, our team members and mm -hmm. our communities. Well, what I'm passionate about, and that's for a lot of people, they're like, oh, that's not exciting. But to me, it's exciting. <laughs> that's what I'm running. That's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. I love people to be able to come in and say, wow, that was quick and easy. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to office. spend time in line. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so 12 years ago, if you would have got a marriage license or mm -hmm. would have came in to get married, it would have taken you between 35 and 45 minutes. Mm -hmm for our team members to process the application. Now, it wasn't their fault. The state requires a lot of information, as you know. Mm -hmm. That was all required yeah. by the state. But it's a matter of you know taking a manager, like a county clerk, um, like myself, that would create the tools for our team members that can provide better customer service. So I came up with the idea of creating the first online marriage application program in the state of Illinois. And like you had indicated too, what this allowed applicants to do is to submit all their information to us online prior to coming to the office to pick up their license. Mm -hmm. And this reduced the time it took our staff to perform the marriage license from 35 to 45 minutes down to seven to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So this was a huge time saver for our community and our staff. And in the first year we went live with the program, just to let you know, 50% of the couples who apply for a marriage license mm -hmm. did so okay. online. Right. It was very powerful. A lot mm -hmm. of the uh, other counties reached out to us mm -hmm. right away when they saw us do this and they mm -hmm. said, where do we buy this? Who'd you get it from? <laughs> and then I told them we developed it in house. Mm -hmm. I developed them house. They said, really, can we copy it? <laughs> I said, yes. And so a lot of the larger counties mm -hmm. today actually have adopted that. Okay. Yeah. And what are those stats after the first year yeah. that you've done it? Have, have they increased the number of people yeah, filling out the, the it, online? It app? goes year to year, but right now it's averaging around 60%. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah. We should have just done a Google search before coming in. Well, when it's nice, if you Google it, it's the top link. Okay. That's pretty nice. <laughs> and and that leads me to, to something else I want to ask you about, which is this. Is the clerk's office able to meet the people where they live? And, and again, I'll use my recent, semi-recent marriage as an example, that your hours are 8.30 to 5, yep. Monday through Friday. It's kind of hard for people where... Both people in a couple, as, as most do nowadays, yeah. are working. You either got to take time off of work or yeah. rush in at the end of your day. Sure. Your, your busiest time is probably the 4 to 5 o'clock hour yeah. to come in and get yeah. these things taken care of. Is there any way that, that you would think to either extend the hours on certain days during the week or change the hours, you know, 10 to 6 certain days during the week, or do mobile office hours for areas in 
outlying Peoria because again, that's a long drive if I'm coming in from Elmwood to get that license. Absolutely, and this is something I really looked at from the beginning. Um, we we never had a lot of people reach out to say we can't make it, but this is something I thought about, and then so one of the main solutions I came up with was creating this you know, online mm-hmm. marriage application program, which would allow people to very quickly on a mm-hmm. lunch break or time come into the office. Because the problem we had is when we talked about this is it's budgetary constraints. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what does it cost to have a mobile site? What does it cost now to an employee uh, to, to, to take the team member off site to work maybe extra hours, change mm-hmm. the hours, you know, the union contract. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of moving parts and mm-hmm. a lot of extra costs that would go mm-hmm. into. And in the environment I've been in the last 12 years, it's about reduction in cost, mm-hmm. but still providing the best service. So you have to find the way to provide that service better, more efficiently, but at the lowest cost. Mm-hmm. And speaking of those costs, you, you noted in, the, in your questionnaire that, that after the combination and, and voters in Peoria County decided affirmatively and, and fairly substantially yep. last decade that they wanted to com- recombine the recorder of deeds office and the clerk's office together. Since that combination, there's been cross-training of staff, of course. There, there's also been a decrease in the total number of employees working in that office. It's happened not through layoffs, but through attrition. Mm-hmm. Is there more room for reductions, or is the office at the point where you really can't lose any more people without compromising customer service? So uh, to touch on that, just get a little bit of background on that. In 2014, when the the voters approved that, Mm -hmm. uh, between the two offices, if you go back and look, there was 20 full-time employees. Mm -hmm. Today, we're operating at 12 and a half Mm full-time employees, and the half is a part-time individual. Most people understand that. Um, So there's been big change, big Mm -hmm. reduction a lot of built-in efficiency, and the team has worked very hard on becoming cross-trained to be able to handle this workload. The workload mm-hmm. didn't go away, right? So mm-hmm. everybody's doing more with less, mm-hmm. and they've learned all the services, and they've done an incredible job. And could you continue to get smaller? That would be difficult as, yes, our services would suffer a little bit potentially, mm-hmm. um, but all these projects I'm putting in place are to handle that if that would occur, okay. right? So this digitization of records, making stuff more accessible online, um, letting people do stuff online uh, allows us to um, handle the customers that come into the office. Mm-hmm. But right now, yes, we are low, and I think the only reason we're able to handle the workload is because of these efficiencies we have built. And let me give you an example of that. So we handle delinquent property tax information. Mm-hmm. Um, so anybody that has delinquent property tax will call us. But we got a large amount of calls from lawyers, consultants, mm-hmm. call centers, banks, banks, mm-hmm. banks, title searchers. And so I looked at this, and I thought, well, they can do this work any hour of the day. Mm-hmm. They know they don't need a long explanation. Mm-hmm. So I found a way to make that, and I put that online. And what that did is that reduced the phone calls by 50% mm-hmm. since I put that mm-hmm. online. And then it allows us to really handle the customer that, and, and rightfully so, is concerned the first time mm-hmm. maybe they've had their property taxes sold or they're going to lose their property. And mm-hmm. we can spend the time and provide with, with good the, service. With the actual resident Absolutely. rather than some of the people who are a little more read into it. You got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And... and yeah, I, same same sort of thing with title searchers and sure. things like that, right? Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right, uh, I want to ask you. You were one of one of the applicants to be appointed mm-hmm. for this position when it became vacant. When longtime and and well loved clerk Steve yeah. Sonnemaker passed absolutely. away last year, you were one of the applicants. You were not chosen for the position at the time. Yeah, why make this run after you weren't chosen by folks in the party? to take the position, and what do you think after that separates you from your opponent? Sure. So I have a large amount of support from the county board. I do. There's county board members supporting me. Um, They were there at my announcement. Uh, So just because I didn't get the appointment doesn't mean that um, I'm not the right person for the job, and I don't add the best value to this community, and I truly believe in that. I've spent my entire professional career um, in the county clerk's office, improving the county clerk's office. It's what I love to do. It's what I want to do. And I, I'm just not a politician. <laughs> I know this is the first time I run for an office, but I'm a public servant, and I love being a public servant. And I just feel like I can continue to give the best value uh, to our community. And there's so many projects I want to continue to bring forward, and I know I can do it. Mm-hmm. I know I'm the right person to do that. And so that's why I'm running. It's what I'm passionate about. Okay. How is the current clerk doing in her position as, as somebody who's an employee who's there every day? 
Sure. So um, I would let her speak to her volume of how she thinks she's handling the job and doing the job. I just know I'm still there as a manager every day, handling the daily day operations. I'm there all day, every day. And staff comes to me uh, with any questions. I'm there to help staff all day. And I'm trying to provide the best tools to the staff. Um, but um, I would leave that question up to her to answer. Okay. And and are there are there challenges of running for the position well, the incumbent is somebody with whom you work on a, a regular basis. I know that, that we previously had instances where there was tension in the recorder of deeds office sure. when a recorder of deeds employee ran against yeah. an incumbent recorder of deeds. Yeah. So the way I look at it is I'm professional. And when I show up every day, I'm there to do the professional job, do the best job for um, our community. So, you know, put all your differences aside, who's running, who wants to be the next county clerk. When you're in there, it's about doing the best work for our community. And that's all I focus on while I'm there. Okay. And I suppose I should clarify, <laughs> since we are live, you you actually are not on the clock right now while you're... <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. Yes. Okay. Is, is there anything else that, that we haven't covered by way of, of specific proposals that, that you have going into, into the election for things? Yeah. I mean, I just uh, want to continue to, you know, make the operations uh, more efficient and the services more accessible. And I've done that. I've showed that I've done that in the past and I will you know, continue to do that. And I have a large track record of doing that and I want to continue to do it. Um, I do want to touch on something uh, that's very important in the office that a lot of people don't know. It's the property tax cycle. And okay. it's, it's not interesting to a lot of people, but it's <laughs> extremely <pretty> boring. <laughs> and it's interesting to a lot of our taxing districts um, within our community because I help a lot of them out. So our office is responsible for calculating the property tax rates hmm. for all the taxing districts in Peoria County. Then taking that calculated rate and extend that on to over 88,000 parcels mm -hmm. within Peoria County, which results in overseeing the billing of $320 million. So this is a huge job, huge responsibility. I perform that task and I oversee it. And I've done that very well and accurate for the last 12 years. It's extremely important. I bring that experience and that knowledge, and I would keep that in the county clerk's office. And a lot of the taxing districts in the community very much appreciate that because they can reach out to me and know any time that I can help them and assist them. And that helps them save money and return our community save money because they don't have to go out and seek outside counsel or help on how to do this work. They you know they can call Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Gabe McLeod, candidate for Peoria County Clerk on the Democratic ballot on the March 17 primary election. Right. Thank, Thank you very you. much for being yeah. here. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm.